Last week was our wildest episode yet. We got roasted by Vince Strang. Even after 14 years of comedy, Kappa forgets you need a stage, a microphone, and a light. Fucking hell. Brett fell off and had a little tanty. I fucked my foot, dude. <laughs> it was a tanty. <laughs> we also found out in Tenerfield they only like dirty jokes, specifically anal. <laughs> <laughs> Benny here again. In this episode, all of the studio footage belongs to the corrupt file that dogged us in the last episode. To keep the series moving, I've taken some low-res backup footage and upscaled it. Some parts look alright, and some parts are still a bit rough, but I'm working with the tools that I've got. Like, these tools, for example. On a side note, if Nick Capper and Brett Blake ever approach you and ask you to help them with a little editing project, don't trust them. So we wake up the next morning, and I'm pretty stressed. Uh, it's the first day of riding. I'm worried about keeping up with everyone. My hand sore, my foot sore. Um, I was in a, I was in a mood. Oh man! I yeah, started off in a, a mood, and it, and it couldn't have started out any better. But no. Brett just puts himself in a bad mood. Ah, I was in a bad mood to start off with. Yeah, put the bloody jug on. Brett's having his beauty shower. Yeah, all the bikes look so good, just stacked all together. There's going to be four or five more joining us. Today, had something stuck in my eye uh, last night and I was just ruined yesterday. I realised we've been riding for, you know, three days or whatever. Now my eye's okay, it's looking a bit better. I was, I had something funny planned to say here, but I don't have it anymore. And then Nick comes up to me, I'm trying to get my bike ready, make sure everything's perfect. And Nick comes up to me, he's like, mate, I've got to film an audition for a commercial. I was like, I've got no time to film this. I'm busy, I'm getting my bike ready. And you're like, mate, I really need to film this. Anyone audition. else would have been, hey man, have you got one minute to just hold a camera still? No. Brett just turns that into, no, I'm angry, I'm right. <laughs> Yes, I'm busy, I've got no time for your, to watch your awful acting. Anyway, you eventually convinced me to hold the camera and I was like, mate, guess what? You're doing it in one take because that's as long as I'm holding it for. You could put it into a cup, you could do anything. I was like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm in a bad mood. No, no, the other way. How do you flip it? So I hold it, you do one take, and you go, can I do it again? I go, nah. <laughs> this is your captain speaking. We're currently cruising through 7-Eleven, earning velocity points on food, fuel, and more. I'm going to earn so many points, I book out every flight so you can't board. We get the bikes ready. Going to the BP, we're all going to meet up, and then we'll take off from here to Ebor. Oh, baby. It's getting exciting, I've seen all the bikes stacked up. We meet up with the border bunch. Alrighty, all the boys are here. We're on. Filling up. And then we're off. Leg one. Legless leg one. Now yes. the border bunch is an elite crew of riders. First you got the leader, Stuart Woods, okay? One of the best riders. He's got uh, he's got a KTM 1290. Nice. He just sits on that thing and he doesn't move. It's like he a doesn't couch. stand up yeah. and he just sits on 130. And he knows every backtrack, every terrible town in Australia. No matter how bad the pub is, no matter how far out it is, Stuart has been there on a motorbike. <laughs> then you got his two sons. You've got Adam, the older one, Adam. I grew up with him, he's my age, best bloke ever. He can get it on the back wheel anywhere, anytime. And he often did. Yeah, yeah, we used to ride, race uh, Nindy Gully motorbike race together. Nice. In his first year he got a place. Oh really? Yeah. How did great. you go? Uh, I didn't go that good. <laughs> 
and then um, you've got his younger brother, Jared. Now, Jared, he doesn't look like he's got a good sense of balance. No. He doesn't look like he's that coordinated. However, has the best sense of balance and coordination I've ever seen. He, he can mono anything. He can get anything on a back wheel. He was, he was riding a Varadero 1200 uh, in the Border Bunch ride we first did. A Varadero? And, oh man, it was, it's the weirdest bike. We'll put, a, we'll put a photo of oh it. Oh my God. And he got that on the back wheel and also broke the sump <laughs> while doing a jump on it. <laughs> One of the best. Then you got Mondo. Mondo, he'd come all the way from, uh, from around near Byron Bay there. He grew up with us in Gundawindi. In his first year, he had this Honda CBF or something, so it was barely a dirt bike. The wheels were like the size of a, like a kiddie's bike. That, that was so small. Like you'd get spare ones at Bunnings? Yeah, you know? man, yeah, they look like that, like little lawnmower wheels. He crushed it. But this year, he had a Tenere 700, a beautiful machine. Then you got my brother, Christian, you got my dad, then you've got the most important man of the trip, one of the most important men, Dave. Mm -hmm. Now Dave was a sweeper, okay? So the way when you all ride together, you have Stuart, he's the leader. Stuart gets to the corner, he waits at the corner. Then the first bike behind him, when he gets to the corner, it stays there. And it waits for every bike to pass then Dave, the sweeper, comes up. That's when it's time for that bike to go, mm. vice versa. So then you don't lose anybody. Yes, and I was trying to figure out where, who, what, the, what I have to do, who's the sweeper, where I have to stay. But little did I know that it would never impact me throughout this whole trip <laughs> as I was always just in front of Dave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and let's just say Dave was annoyed for a lot of the trip. <laughs> But then we can't we can't forget also one of the best riders of the world. Oh bunch. man, one of my favourites. We can't Love him. we can't forget him. Um, he's competed in the Fink. Yes. Probably 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 nearly the best rider out of all of us, Tom Jack. Yes. Tom Jack is an absolute weapon. He's got a CRF 450. He always rides in a flanny, and he always has a sheepskin cover <laughs> on his seat. <laughs> Nothing is more emasculating than watching a guy in a flanny and a sheepskin cover pass you on a back wheel. And wasn't it Jared that just had a jerry can attached to the back of the bike? Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't get a long range tank. Ah, so close enough. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we meet up with the boys and then we start taking off towards Ebor. It is fantastic, beautiful scenery, and I'm winding out the bike. I'm winding around, I'm getting up to a, like 130 through the forest. Well, supposedly, like a friend of mine was getting it up to 130 through oh, the forest. You've got to remember, Nick's speedo doesn't work as well. Yeah, why it would it? Work. No, no, why would it? You don't need to. Mondo, first victim. Yeah, I, I think he was just in front of me, but I just saw him just go into the bushes. <laughs> and then I was like, we're a man down and it's 15 minutes. And keep in mind, Nick isn't telling you this because I, I think it's like a lot with my friends as well. When you haven't seen your friends in a long time, you forget how, you claim you're not a competitive guy, but I think you are, because you guys ended up in straight away, as soon as you took off, it was a race. And you guys were already going faster than you yesterday, and I was like, well, I am stuffed today. Yeah. You guys flew off, and I was like, just me and you, Dave. <laughs> There's already been one crash. Yeah, one crash straight off the bat. Um, yeah, Mondo buggered his knee, but it was fine. He was still, he kept on, he kept going like a champ. I didn't even know he'd crashed until yeah, he told right. me that night at the pub. He was fine. So yeah, we're going along and I'm flying along and then I feel 
like there's some heat, heat in my right hand. Right. And I'm like, what's going on here? And it's getting hotter and hotter and hotter. And I pull over. Holy shit. Must have just missed the stand. I'm like, what is going on here? Turns out, I do have handlebar warmers. <laughs> but, only one of them works. And I accidentally hit the switch and turned it on. I love how we had three days of being frozen and then on the warmest day, yeah. it decides to start working. Yeah. So now you've got a sweaty hand. Yeah. <laughs> Brutal. So I turned it off and then we kept going. That insult to injury. I'm already the slowest guy on the track, and one of the guys slows down, which I actually like this about your mates as well, because they were quite helpful. They offered me tips on how to ride, how to take corners faster, what I should do in different situations. So I'm like, I'm trying to learn as we go past. But at some stage, Adam passes me, but on his back wheel. <laughs> I've never felt more demasculated in my whole life, and I was like, Cool, here we are, all right, guess, yep, that's great. <laughs> and, but the thing is, I'm riding along and I'm riding at a, a pace that I'm comfortable at, I'm still very ginger from the day before, I'm putting along, I'm annoying Dave, and he's like, just pull the throttle, I'm like, I'm trying to, mate, all right, I'm freaking out over here. And uh, I, the, the best part of the day was I got to really enjoy the scenery. Yeah. It was beautiful, we went through all these caves, it was forest, there was cows on the side. I'm having a great time, just loving the scenery. Yeah, I didn't see any of it. Well, no, you were in a dirt bike race the whole time. <laughs> I loved it. I was like, well, when I got to see you guys, you'd wait, and then I wouldn't see you guys again for the rest of the day. <laughs> talking a fair bit and then I realised it wasn't on. <laughs> we found a beautiful spot by Man River and pulled over to stretch our legs. Oh, hands getting a little tingly. <laughs> I saw your back wheel go out, I started laughing. As I said, you're right. Well, we couldn't lounge about forever. We had to get back on the road. It was just a dream. Riding around with the boys, winding around. We get to this um, big log yeah. in, the, in the middle of the road. And uh, we're like, how are we gonna get over this? Anyway, we've, we got some rocks, we put it against the, the log. And we just all managed to kind of push the, the, the bikes over the log. Anyway, Tom Jack goes, I'm just gonna ride it. And so it's next to the river and he goes, we're like, mate, you can ride it if you want. Whatever you do, don't jump off the side because it's straight down. Like there's like a hill that goes like that. Yeah. He hits the log and then he just jumps straight off the side. <laughs> he must've felt from like three or four meters. 
down, just does a full army roll down this bank. And it was the best thing Did ever. Did you get any footage Did, of it? into the bike. Yeah, we got some footage. Oh, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> the worst part is when, when I eventually got to the log, everyone had got all their bikes over because we went through a construction zone and they were just redoing the roads and there was a traffic light in the middle of nowhere. So not only am I like 10 minutes behind the group, we, me and Dave then hit a traffic light which holds us up for another 10 minutes. So now we're tw I'm, tw I'm like looking even worse than I am. I'm 25 minutes behind the group. I'm like, this is, I mean, I'm gonna have to shout so many beers tonight. It's gonna cost me an absolute fortune. <laughs> But uh, we get there and we eventually get all the bikes over and get through. Oh uh, yeah, we got all, all the bikes over. It's a great day. We're riding along next to rivers. Stewie had shown us like some of the most beautiful track. Oh my God, they're amazing. I don't even know how he found them all. You know, it's amazing. <laughs> then we pull into Ebor. Ooh, Ebor. Ebor, it, the name says it all. It is a paradise. <laughs> there's a servo, there's a shop, and then there's the pub. But it's like, it's a pub full of character. Like, it's one of those pubs that looks like it's accidentally been built. Yeah, I yeah. love that the pub was attached to our accommodation, so it was kind of like a lounge room. You had a hallway, yeah. Yeah. so it felt like a big sense, like a good sense of community and stuff, you know? I loved it. I got straight on the beers. Uh, this is living. I was so excited they had a washing machine as well. I was like, yes, finally. Oh, I was wearing mate. the same clothes for three days. It's great. <laughs> it's been five days, and the first thing I was excited about seeing was this bad boy, a washing machine. Well, it was actually the shower beer I had before, but fuck off. And I, I never drink rum and cokes or anything like that, except when I'm with these guys. Straight on them. Straight on the rum and cokes. Oh my and we God. Gave, give it a real good polishing. Because yeah, like, like, Cap is with his mates, which is great. And he's, you know, catching up with everyone. And it's having a good time. But I was like, Nick, we're here to do some filming. We're here to film. We've got to get some content, you know, get some content. And he goes, all right, Brett, nah, grabs the video camera. And you know what? I can't, I can't judge her. You went around, you got some content, you got everyone to do some pieces to camera. And then about half an hour later, I was, I was so proud of you. Thanks for helping me out doing some of the work. I look at the camera, you forgot to turn it on. <laughs> I don't know if that story's still true. I think we've got some footage. The most disrespectful thing's already happened during your trip. You wheelie passed me. Yes. <laughs> Not only passing me, but on one wheel. <laughs> hey! <laughs> we hit the sack very late, had too many rum and cokes, but we were just we were just so happy to see each other. And then we had to get up for the next day. Yes, but before we did that, Nick, I noticed something on my camera. I noticed a little scratch on the top. Now on the day, you said to me, I don't know how it happened. Maybe there was a rock yeah. in the case. Well, how can a rock get into the case? It's a waterproof case. Would you like to set the record straight and now tell me what happened, Nick? <laughs> now it's on camera. It was on the back of the bike and Tom Jack it. fell off the side of the log. <laughs> so I had to went and help him and then the camera fell off the bike. <laughs> <sighs> I can feel the rage coming back. <laughs> But anyway, it's only a scratch, who cares? Yeah, yeah, when it's not yours, who cares? Yeah, 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 yeah. We got to Ebor. The next day would be beautiful. We're going, Stewie was taking us on the biggest ride around Ebor, and we're staying that night again in the beautiful city of Ebor. Ooh, yeah. Legends, along the ride, we raised some cash for Are You Bogged, Mate, which is a men's mental health charity for blokes in the country. If you've got some spare coin, jump on their website and donate. In the next episode, Brett is brutally injured and has to stay in bed. Nah, no, just kidding, he washed out. Kappa sees the beautiful sights of Ebor and gets towed up by Mondo. Oh man, that was brutal. And then Brett goes to the shop and watches YouTube. It was Anthony Bourdais and it was a beautiful episode. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs>